Hurricane Matthew, we knew, was coming for about a week. Actually, probably before that, we knew there was a hurricane out in the Caribbean, and we kept a watch on it just to see. It was interesting following its path because there was really no predicted path that was steady. Hurricane Matthew kept changing um, throughout um, its course. And actually leading up the week before, we watched it very closely every day just to see what it was going to, to do. We knew that the impact at that point in time was going to be somewhere in the United States, uh, at least up the coast and at varying levels up the coast. And originally the prediction was that it would be off the coast of North and South Carolina, wouldn't be coming ashore. Um, at most, Lumberton and Robinson County was going to be in the outer bands of it. And um, the last prediction we had on Friday was that we might see five to six inches of rain, is what I remember. But even with that, uh, the week before, watching it and monitoring and everything, we wanted to make sure that we were prepared, even for the five to six inches of rain, because we knew that there had already been rain prior to that, which had us in some minor flooding in some, some areas. So we knew there was gonna be some impact. We anticipated um, that there would be uh, trees downed because there were gonna be some sustained winds that would probably have winds down because we've experienced that in the past and knew that that was a part of it. So we, we thought about power outages. We checked our generators to make sure the generators were gonna fire up, that they were fully fueled and ready to go. We did as we have learned in the past to make sure that we're prepared for 72 hours of no power uh, or a backup generator power. We assessed all of our patients in the hospital to identify which were the most critical and um, made sure that we had all the necessary supplies and everything in those locations should the power go out and for that short period of time before the generators kicked in, that everybody was on guard and ready to do what they needed to do to make sure that no one was injured as a result of that. We checked our patients in home health uh, to know and made a list of those that were on um, support devices at home that might need power and that type thing. We made sure that they had backup supplies. Um, we checked Woodhaven, our long-term care facility, to make sure that its generators were working. The hospice house to make sure that they had generators uh, available as well. So going into it, we anticipated power outages. We knew that was going to occur. What we didn't anticipate was the total impact of the hurricane itself. We didn't anticipate 15 inches of rain. We didn't anticipate a sustained period of flooding like we had to the magnitude that we had. We didn't anticipate the number of trees that were gonna be down and the fact that they not only would be down on power lines and knocking out the power, but also uh, roads, that the roads would be so significantly impacted by it. Uh, we had several patients that we needed that were able to be discharged. However, we could not get them out of the hospital just like people could not come into the hospital. So from there, we had to take care of patients that to a certain degree did not need any medical help, but at the same time, they at least needed a shelter for several hours. So we stayed here throughout the day. We did our shifts, and towards the end of the shift, that's when the, the state was pretty much closing a lot of different roads around the hospital. And also, the highway, 95 north and south, were both closed. There were people that were actually stuck on the roads and the highways. So people that had been working here for 12 plus hours could not get home. So a lot of people had to actually stay here and they just worked an extra shift. They had to sleep here in the hospital. They had to shower here at the hospital. So people that slept here and stayed here, they ended up working with patients in, in areas that were not familiar to them just because they wanted to help out. I was on call the weekend of Hurricane Matthew. So I was there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of the hurricane. I worked my normal shifts and then on Monday went home at thinking that I was going to have a, a few hours off at least and then we kind of got the the call that all hands needed to to be on deck. I live just a few minutes from the hospital so I was able to um, report back to the hospital. I went to the um, command center to see where I would best be useful and they sent me to the labor pool and when I reported to the labor pool they first thought that maybe they were going to need some extra hands in the emergency room. So I went to the emergency room that afternoon and because of the other physicians who had also reported in they were fully staffed 
in the ER. So they didn't need me in the ER. Went back to the labor pool and they asked if I could be a nurse. So I said, well, I, I probably would be the, the worst nurse ever because I haven't started an IV in years. And uh, I don't know that I can do any of the charting, but what I might lack in those skills, I make up for in willingness. So um, they sent me to Six North in the bed tower to be a nursing assistant. As director of the hospitalist program, unofficially, uh, my um, experience is that I assisted the nocturnist, which is the nighttime um, hospitalist uh, with admission. The hurricane, I think, helped uh, physicians and uh, other parts of the hospital staff show how well they could work together in very trying situations. I know that uh, a lot of the physicians that were traveling from Raleigh, from Fayetteville, and even from South Carolina had uh, lots of difficulties uh, in getting to the hospital and I really have to give them credit for their not giving up in finding pathways to the hospital. So I think there were many instances of physicians working above and beyond their um, scheduled times to work. And I think we also saw physicians pitching in and uh, working in areas that they don't normally work in. Um, and I was, I was amazed at the uh, number of physicians that uh, made it to work and spent the night. Uh, so there were a lot of obstacles and I think it would have been very easy for physicians to just call and say, well, I just can't make it. And that was uh, very rare that, that we saw that. Um, there were issues and obstacles in, in caring for patients in the hospital. Uh, but I think that with the cooperative nature of uh, the different specialties, the emergency department, Med One from Charlotte, that uh, we, in my opinion, managed this uh, catastrophe very well. Uh, we did have uh, providers because our clinics uh, weren't able to open and we knew we had a number of patients of ours that were in the shelters and patients of other people who were in the shelters as well. Um, a number of our providers were dispatched to the various shelters across um, the county. Uh, I know Dr. Dennis Stewart, Brownie McLeod, um, PA, uh, Kat Gaines, uh, Josh Freeman, a number of them went to the shelters. They took uh, kits with them that would uh, allow them to care for the patients with things that they knew they were going to need. They took insulin with them. They took medications with them. They made sure that they could triage patients effectively and care for them. Um, they set up a mini clinic, if you will, in each of those shelters uh, and saw many of their same patients in those shelters while they were there. The remarkable thing about being in the shelters was if you can imagine the Bill Sapp Recreation Department with the floor basically covered both ends of the court all, and in the middle with cots and people on every single one of those cots. And you'd go to cot one and you'd say, what have you lost? And they'd say everything. You'd say, well, what happened? Well, the water was six feet in my house. And you'd say, gosh, that's awful. And then you'd move to the next one and you'd say, what happened to you? Well, the water was four feet in my house and I lost everything. And so it was incredible to see hundreds of people who had literally lost all of their physical possessions and there they were and they were just as uh, accepting and understanding of it as simply what happened and I saw very little oh woe is me I saw an acceptance of a horrible situation with a resolution that said we're going to deal with this somehow we're going to be able to deal with this and even today, as we, as we walk the halls of the hospital and have conversations with our employees, and you ask them how they weathered the storm, even those that uh, did lose their homes, did lose their automobiles, did lose a lot of things that, uh, that they had worked their life for, you know, responding with a smile that uh, 
that uh, I'm where I need to be and you know, things will take care of itself. This is just a bump in the road for us and uh, we're, going to, uh, we're going to recover and do well and I think uh, that speaks volumes of the people that work for this organization and I'll tell you I am so proud to be a part of this, this team at Southeastern Health. I started Saturday at 11 but by 11 before I got here at 11 it was already flooding already. I stay um, next to two ditches and the ditches was already filled with water. So we had to realize on Saturday that we didn't have enough people to cover the shift like in like any other restaurant or any other uh, business. In those kind of situations, they closed down. But at a hospital, you can't stop, right? So we have to keep turning. And the people still keep coming in because people are sick, people need aid. There's no situation where you can go home, right? And people like me didn't have a home, so you know, we have to put our big man shorts on and, and aid. It's very different. I think it made me a better person now, though. You know, because you realize what you can go through and can't go through and persevere, you know? Absolutely. And this is nothing now. I, if I stayed here with no water and barely no food, you can stay anywhere. Well, I scared to work Saturday from 8 to 4.30, and I end up staying over a week up here and you know, the hurricane came that Sunday, about five feet of water was in the house. And I just still had peace. I mean, I, I, it was almost like I didn't have no house over there. I don't know why. <laughs> but I, I just didn't worry about it. A week later, I did go over, <clears throat> you know, when the water went down. Just a mess in the house, you know, smelling and the mold and carpet wet and stuff turned over the bed clothes. What I learned from you, I don't care what you have, you can lose it. Just like the Lord give it to you, you can lose it. But they need to thank God to save their life, you know, because they could have been a lot more funerals than they, they uh, were. Well, a lot of people could have got drowned right in their homes because that's how that water was coming in. Someone out of the cleaning department said that she told her that she didn't have anything. She lost everything that she had. And she said she started to cry. And uh, I said, well, you don't worry about it. She said all she wanted some underwear and a pajama set. That's it. And so even though I, I know I didn't have anything, but I could swipe anything I wanted to off my badge. And I remember Patty giving us some stuff, pillows, and it, it was some underwear in the box. And I remember getting the underwear out. I didn't know what size she wore, but I knew it was some underwear. And I went to the gift shop and they had a, a pajama set and I took it up and she said, thank you so much. This is all I wanted. I don't know who told you to come here, but thank you. It was an amazing effort of a number of people who many of them had lost everything at their homes, um, but came to work with a smile on their face and said, you know, there's a higher need here than my own personal need, and I'm going to put the needs of others before myself. That was just amazing to watch.